Welcome to Below the 49th, the perspective on my neighbor to the south, Below the 49th. I'm Michael A. Charbon. Today's title, The Electric Fleet. You know, there's a different voice in America, it's a different political world, and there's a different perspective in the Oval Office. President Joe Biden has begun to implement his administration's point of view and the promises that won them the election. They possess the power to influence and begin social change in America, speaking to all Americans of all colors. So what are the things that this new president must do now to appeal to all Americans? What's the most exciting and game-changing thing that the Biden-Harris administration will attempt? But most importantly, what's the number one assignment that demands all hands on deck? That's the defeat of the pandemic. This administration must capitalize on the resources and the advancement that American pharmaceuticals have created. They need to focus on putting vaccines in arms and executing. Use the military, exploit the Defense Protection Act, engage private businesses, arenas, Walmarts, Home Depots for goodness sakes. Wage an internal battle to dispense mass vaccinations on a mass basis now. Spare no expense and do not be preoccupied with the political kabuki theater in the Senate. As the pandemic remedy is the elixir that will cure all of America's ails now. Command the process, devise the tactics of implementation, and vaccinate on an unparalleled proportion. Set the bar for the world, America. This assignment is the most important and deserves the government's undivided attention now. By rescuing the caged American with the vaccine in the arm, the economy will quickly come back. America has been cooped up and, like a sick and injured animal, will be nursed back to health. As soon as the cage is open and they realize freedom, the animal bolts. America will go to dinner more, see more live music, attend more live theaters, and go out to more movies and live life. Did anybody say baby boom? Those with money will spend just a little more because now they can. Consumer confidence will soar. So for those who survived, life will be very busy. You got to allow business to open now. Wear a mask, social distance, and all that business. But open up America. Businesses must operate and begin the difficult road back. Stop just allowing only the big box stores to have customers. You got to create an open up America initiative and watch how we all will get back on our feet that much quicker. You got to get kids back to school. Stop remote learning. Make going back to school a big priority and put bums in classrooms. Statistics show that less uh, affected kids uh, are, feel the pandemic. So when the kids are at school, guess what the parents are doing? They're going to work. Fix the teacher disputes. Support the schools. But get the kids back in the classrooms. That's absolutely imperative. You got to help small businesses with reduced borrowing rates, allow people the ability to work and get back what they lost in money and business. You have to be hyper responsive to maintaining the survival of small, independently owned, unique businesses. Ensure survival regardless of the race of the owner, because by playing the race card you're dividing, all owners have skin in the game. To make a recovery work, this sector will have to work the hardest for their survival and represents the largest body of employers. They must be helped as small business represents the backbone and the savior of the American economy. You've got to protect the creative industries as well. That's art, music, uh, live uh, theater, etc. They've really suffered a devastating result from the pandemic. Support the unsung heroes who contribute in supporting these capabilities to those valuable creative efforts. That's like lighting and makeup and sound and so many more who support that industry. Believe me, the life of a freelancer never takes tomorrow for granted. They continually hustle and work to get the next gig because this is the secret sauce to creativity. On a larger scale, the American music industry, live theater industry, and American artists at large brings great joy and celebration to the American psyche, and American entertainment is number one. People who want to be entertained, guess what they do? They spend money and they eat. So these precarious creative occupations must be supported in the same way as small businesses because they are small businesses. You know, in times past, it was the wealthy patrons, kings and queens who funded and supported the artists and the innovators. It was uh, through those financial supports that uh, humanity saw the creation of some of the world's most captivating pieces of art and the drive to innovate and create. 
Next, you got to fix the election debate. I mean, goodness, the election process moving forward demands review. Democrats and Republicans must come together to redefine, evaluate, and tweak the election process. This so that in 2022, America is finally trusting of the legitimacy of a vote. Voter ID. Voter ID is imperative. Make sure that all those who wish and need voter ID can obtain it. Go to racialized communities. Give them voter ID because voter ID equals a vote. And consider that Congress's single vote power, you know, the reality that both in the House and the Senate, the party divide is so extremely close, means that every vote counts now. Uh, more than ever, it's that both parties and on certain bills that are of a controversial nature possess more political power and value. You got to be there to vote and people are watching what you're voting. This test will very likely hit the, boo the blue dog Democrats' conscience and maybe their paws for added consideration because they're going to have to be competing with the, t uh, the opinions when they go home in their riding in the next 12 months. People are watching. And for some, 2022 looms even greater and sooner than you think. The rule of law. Law and order, the power of enforcement, and the law itself to maintain civility is the majority of Americans' beliefs. Violent northwestern American cities need to address vigilantes and control their cities. Police are not perfect. But today, America can vividly see representations of all races and all colors in all positions of policing. From police chief to community foot patrols to municipal oversight, organization politics and in government, racial diversity and representation exists. It is promoted and works. Review. Trust, validate, but enforce. With body cameras, dash cameras, and two-man police crews, two-man crews, make all the stops that much safer. But that, my friends, is at a cost, a cost to enforce the law, not defund the police. Immigration. <clears throat> Giving the dreamers a pathway is the correct and right answer. This group of people who were born or brought to America beyond their control were raised and grew up and went to school and lived in America as Americans. It's all they've known. They are the believers and they live the American dream every day. What better candidate to give a pathway to patriotism and embrace US, US citizenship? Think of the power of this group of people moving forward, forward. I mean, they can become the new league of patriots. This statistical block of influencers will take their pride and example to their communities. They will also represent a voting block, are you listening Republicans, and will reward the party that acknowledges them. A clear definition of the American border. Listen, if a caravan of immigrants thinks that they can walk into America legally, live and work uh, unhindered, that hope can never be promoted and never be reality. Never mind free health care. If an illegal alien claims refugee status or landed status and commits a criminal events, uh, offense, I should say, there should be no exception. They're deported, kicked out, see a sayonara, bye-bye. To live and become an American is a privilege, not a right. Tent people, are you ready for this? They've got to address the 30,000 plus tent people living in California. The current economic condition, the health hazards, and the reality of these indigent people who want to settle and pose a cost burden on the already fragile infrastructure of California by living in a tent on the side of the road cannot be tolerated. California laws must be changed to eliminate the problem. Laws, right? The next point for me, this is the big game changer. I mean, this really uh, will have a positive effect on the world and establish America as a true leader. It really is the electric fleet. The electrification of America with the electric cars for the federal government is the century's moment of fundamental change. The Biden-Harris team got it right when they pledged to take federally the 650,000 gas-powered fleet vehicles and replace it with electric vehicles. This goal has deadlines and clearly leads America away from the internal combustion of engine. Uh, com internal combustion engine is what I wanted to say. And with the government's co uh, commitment to purchase this huge order, they're going to influence the manufacturing market, reduce the cost of a future electric car, and establish America as the market leader. 
You know, it will place more charging stations in more locations and realize the electrification of America on an unprecedented scale. And for me, this point is an exciting aspect of the Biden administration. It will also allow the American petroleum industry time to notify, notify and, and do tools down to concentrate on how they will participate in the new electric vehicle explosion. In Canada, we say when America sneezes, Canada catches a cold. When America takes the bold first step to electrify the federal fleet, it will change the speed the world will change. The market will demand better design, please. But, but be aware that today's youth, well, they don't really have the same relationship with the reality of owning a car or paying insurance, gosh, or repairs and gas. Many will never own a car. They've got Uber. That's the car. It's on their phone. Car sharing is the future, as is autonomous self-driving cars. The future is at our doorstep. America, by simply addressing electrification of the federal fleet, triggers international attention and pushes others who may not have initiated the wave themselves, resulting in a growing, profound electric economic threat. Like Ford did with the Model T, the electric fleet will be the next step in America's evolution and success. Finally, please click and share, and if you do so, we'd love you to subscribe. If you leave a comment, I try to answer everyone. I thank you for those considerations. Until next time, God bless and stay safe. I'm Michael A. Charbon for Below the 49th.